In today's video, I'd like to show you my prepping architecture diagram. This is going to be a deep dive analysis into the world of emergency preparedness, starting off with you and your EDC and expanding out from there. So this could be something that could be valuable to beginning preppers in addition to more advanced preppers. So let's just get right down to it. This is my prepping architecture diagram. Since there's a little bit of a glare, I'm going to turn off one of the lights so you can see the screen a little better. So in emergency preparedness, everything starts off with you, you are a person, right? If you're watching this video, this is you. Most likely you have a home that's your home base. So whether it's a house, condo, apartment, an RV, you name it, you have some kind of home base. Next, most likely you have some sort of off-site location, whether that be your work, your school, or something else. Oftentimes you're going from your home to an off-site location. So again, you're gonna be going from your home to your offsite location, maybe from home to work, and then work over to the store, to your kid's school, and then back home again. And this is for most people, this is what their life is. Now, unless you take public transportation, you most likely have some sort of vehicle to get you back and forth from all these various places, maybe a car, truck, even a bicycle. You have some sort of vehicle that's gonna be with you to taking you to these locations, unless you're using public transit, that is. So in the prepping architecture diagram, this is called transit. So we're gonna transit from our home to work, home to school, home to the mall, home, you name it, to some other location. Now, so far, we haven't even talked about anything with regard to emergency preparedness, but it all starts right here, and it starts with you and your EDC. So if you don't have an EDC, you should get an EDC. That stands for everyday carry. It stands for the items that you store on your person on a day-to-day -day basis. At a bare minimum, you should have a flashlight, a multi-tool, some method of starting a fire, and possibly a knife. And that would be your basic EDC that you would store possibly in one of your front pockets. Let me turn off one more light so you can see this next portion a little bit better. So in prepping, I like to organize everything into various prepping categories, which I've called the color of prepping in my videos. And so some of those prepping categories are food, water, shelter, first aid, fire, comms, tools, cooking, clothing, hygiene, and then personal miscellaneous items. And I like having all of mine color coordinated. So all of my food items are green, water items are in blue, blue is associated with water, brown is for shelter, first aid would be red, and then we have orange for fire, green for comms, black for tools, gray for cooking, purple for clothing, white for hygiene, and pink for personal. In emergency preparedness, I like organizing all of my home preps into various categories, following the categories that we have listed here for the color of prepping. So that helps keep everything a little bit more organized in your home. There's a fine line between prepping and hoarding, and I like trying to avoid the hoarding line as much as I can. So keep, keeping everything in modules, in categories, and color coordinating them helps me, and I think it helps others as well. Now let's start expanding some of the items that we carry as part of our EDC, and that could be something called a go bag. So a go bag is something that you might carry with you as you're going through transits, as you're going from home to your offsite location. So going from home to school or home to work. Most people like having uh, some sort of go bag that expands upon the, what they could carry in their pockets. For me, I go and commute or transit to work and I like having my EDC messenger bag, which is a commuter bag that I use with my office laptop in addition to additional supplies. And with that go bag, I also like color coordinating that based off of the color of prepping, which is the various prepping categories. So the items that I have in my EDC messenger bag or my go bag is organized in the same method that I do for my hold supplies as well. So if you have a vehicle that you're using as part of your transit from going home to work or home to school, it's also a good idea to have some prepping items in your vehicle. So you're also gonna to wanna to start having some vehicle preps. I have a playlist that has all of my items for vehicle preps or preps that are stored in my vehicle. And just like with my EDC go bag and with my home preps, I also have my vehicle preps color coordinated and modularized into the various prepping categories that we talked about earlier. Now, even at that offsite location, if it's your work, for example, you'll also want to have some prep stored over there, perhaps an office emergency preparedness kit or something at your school or in your dorm room or something like that. And just like with your EDC and with your vehicle preps and with your home, you're also going to want to have those color coordinated and organized based off of the various prepping categories. So 
as you see, I like working within some sort of system where everything's organized, where I have all of my water supplies at my offsite location organized with the color blue, and it matches what might be in my go bag, which matches what might be in my vehicle preps, which matches what I have in my home base where I have the majority of my preps stored. There's various levels of preparedness that we're gonna talk about next. Let me turn off the lights so you can see it a little bit better. So here's what I have for my preparedness levels. You have level zero, which is nothing. So if you're the average person, you're not even thinking about emergency preparedness or prepping or being a prepper. So you have no EDC, you have no go bag, you don't have home preps. So level zero is just nothing. Then you move on to level one, which is 72 hours. That's the minimum that you wanna have. They talk about having 72 hour emergency bags or a bug out bag, and that's where that time frame comes in. For me, level two is two weeks. So if you have a major power outage, for example, maybe a bad storm has come through a blizzard something like that and for me that's two weeks so that's two weeks of food two weeks of water two weeks of first aid supplies and that's where you, where the whole numbering comes in after that you have level three which i have as one month so one month supply of food 30 days of food 30 days of water 30 days of being able to cook that water so the fuel required for your cooking category to be able to prepare the food that's level three and that's one month or 30 days next we have level four so that's three months so three months of food water and your emergency supplies or 90 days that's a pretty good goal that most people should try to strive for if you have three months of food long-term food storage three months of water three months of cooking supplies, fuel, backup power sources, that's, you're doing pretty good at that point. Now, if you're doing really good, you might have level five, which is one year. So one year's worth of food, maybe in a freezer, you have a whole bunch of meat stored in there, or you have one year's supply of mountain house food or MREs or canned food, non-perishable food. And same with fuel, water, and all the other various prepping categories. And then the final level that I have is indefinite, level six. So maybe I have a farm, for example, and I just have nonstop food. I have my own garden with nonstop veg fruits and vegetables, and I have a water source or a well I just have an infinite supply of water and so for me that's level six that's definite and that's pretty pretty good if you're at that level so so far we haven't really been talking about things like bug out bags and things like that there's two main categories bugging in and bugging out so we're gonna talk about that now in a real emergency situation your main goal should be to bug in that's where the majority of your supplies are at. They're at your home base, they're at your home, your apartment, your condo, your RV. You have the most supplies there. So if at all possible, in an emergency situation, you should try to bug in. Now, even though you wanna bug in in most emergency situations, it's still a good idea to have a bug out approach. So having what's called a bug out bag or a bob, that's a, usually a 72 hour kit that's mainly stored as a backpack. You have a set of supplies that will last you for 72 hours, just in case your bug in location was no longer safe. So if there's an earthquake, maybe the house was on fire, you don't want to bug in in those, those scenarios. You want to bug out and grab your emergency kit. That's where the bob comes into play. So you're bugging out from your bug in location. Now, when you're not in your home, you still might want to have some emergency kits for evacuation purposes. So in your vehicle, you may want to have something called a get home bag, GHB. So that's kind of like a bug out bag, but instead of bugging out from your bug in location, you're just wanting to get home to your bug in location. So for your vehicle preps, you may have a get home bag in the back, in the trunk or someplace like that. And then also with your offsite location, maybe at your school dorm room or at your office, you might want to have a get home bag. So Again, the goal is to get home to your bug in location. Now, these are all topics of evacuation. So these are all evacuation emergency preparedness topics. Again, we're talking about ev evacuating from your bug in location at your home or evacuating from your vehicle. Maybe you're on the side of the road. Maybe uh, traffic is at a complete standstill and you want to get home in an emergency situation. You're evacuating your vehicle to get to your home base. Or if something happens at the office or at your school, again, you're evacuating your school, taking your get home bag and trying to get back home. So again, for evacuation, if you're at your home in your bug-in location, you have to evacuate for whatever reason, maybe your house is on fire, for example. You're gonna grab your bug out bag or your bob and you're gonna evacuate the home to a short-term evacuation location. Maybe it's some kind of rendezvous point that you've established with your family. It might be across the street, it might be at a park, it might be at a nearby location, but you just need to get out of your home and be somewhere just 
away from the home. So you could even be in the driveway. So that's your short-term evacuation location. Not all emergencies happen when you're at your home location. So sometimes an emergency might happen when you're in your vehicle transiting from home to work, or maybe you're at work, you work eight hours a day. So you might wanna evacuate from your vehicle, maybe you're stuck on the side of the road, or you might wanna evacuate when you're at the office, maybe there's some kind of emergency situation happening at the downtown area that you're working at. And so the goal for this is to get to a short-term evacuation location, again, another rendezvous point. So maybe outside of your office building, the building's on fire or something like that. Maybe your car's stuck on the side of the road and you need to get to a safer location. You're gonna, again, grab your get home bag, your emergency kit, and go to your short-term evacuation location. And the goal from this is to get from your short-term evacuation location to your short-term evacuation location that's outside of your home. So again, your rendezvous points. If an emergency happens, let's say there's a big earthquake and you're at work, your goal is to get be, at first be safe at your work. Once it's safe, grabbing your get home bag and then trying to get to your short-term evacuation location to a safe place outside of the office and then to try to get home. The whole point of a get home bag is to get home. The whole point of a bug out bag is to evacuate your home. For me, these are major evacuation events. So something where most likely it's not gonna be the end of the world, maybe your house is on fire and you have to put out the fire, the fire department's there. That's a major event, it's still very important. It's not like you're gonna be going off into the middle of the woods in those kind of scenarios. Now there might be some scenarios that are even worse than some kind of fire or earthquake. Maybe it's no longer safe to be at your short-term evacuation location. Maybe there's civil unrest or something like that. So you might wanna to have to start thinking about evacuating waiting from that location as well. So it's no longer safe to be in your home and it's no longer safe to be at your short-term evacuation location. Whether you're outside of your office, outside of your vehicle, or outside of your home, you have to get a little bit farther away from that. So you may want to go to some sort of long-term evacuation location like a bug out location. So if you have a cabin in the woods, if you have established a family member that hey, if something bad happens, I'm coming over to your place and they could do the same vice versa. So that's a long-term evacuation location or a bug out location. For me, that's a critical evacuation. So we have major evacuations, things where most likely, you know, fire happens, they put out the fire, you'll go back to your home. There's also critical evacuation events. So something where it's no longer safe even to be at your home or anywhere near your home, you have to go to a bug out location. That's a critical event. Now the next one is low probability, but it could still technically happen. Maybe it's no longer safe to be at your bug out location and you have to evacuate from there. So that might be like a Mad Max scenario or the end of the world as we know it. There's a lot of different terms in the emergency preparedness community. So this is one where you're going to be having your inch. So I'm never coming home. So yeah, just everything's gone bad. Your home's no longer safe. Your short-term evacuation location is never safe. Your long-term evacuation location, your bug out location is no longer safe. And so you basically have to go Mad Max style. That's inch. I'm never coming home. And that'd be a bad time. For me, that's a true SHTF scenario where it's just the end of the world as we know it and you're never coming home from there. We've talked about a lot of different things so far. We talked about you as a person watching this video and then you probably have a home, you probably go to work or go to school or go somewhere else. You might have a vehicle to take you back and forth there and that's the whole concept of transit. And then maybe you decide you wanna get into prepping and so you start forming your own EDC and maybe get a, a go bag or an EDC messenger bag. Start storing some preps at your home, start storing some preps in your vehicle, keep a little kit at your office. And then we talked about the various prepping categories that are based off of the color of prepping to help keep everything organized. We also talked about very is preparedness levels, how many supplies you want to have, whether you want to have 72 hours of supplies or if you want to have six months of supplies. And then we also talked about the concept of evacuation. So having a bug out bag or various emergency kits, get home bag, get home bag, going to short term evacuation locations, going to a bug out location or going, you know, end of the world as we know it. But we haven't talked about the most important thing for emergency preparedness as part of the prepping architecture. And that is the number one thing, knowledge. Knowledge is skills, training, and licenses. It does you no good to have all of these things without the knowledge on how to use them. For example, it doesn't do you much good to have a whole bunch of first aid supplies and not know how to use them. It doesn't do you much good to have a fire starter as part of your fire category, which is orange, if you don't know how to use the fire, or having comms supplies without knowing how to use the radios. So again, knowledge is the most important thing and it applies to all of the various aspects of emergency preparedness that we 
we've talked about. It applies to your EDC, situational awareness. It applies to your home preps. It applies to evacuation, whether you know how to navigate, for example, use a compass, use a GPS, uh, be able to read the stars, all of those kind of things. It, so it applies to evacuation, it applies to all the various prepping categories and the various levels. Again, knowledge is the number one prep. I wanted to give a very special shout out to Mike, who lives in the Seattle area. He's a project manager, and we've had conversations and have met for lunch off and on for the past year, where we've talked about these various categories. Again, I work in software engineering. Mike works as a project manager, and so we think a lot alike in terms of how to organize preparedness topics. And so we think about it as flow diagrams, as categories. And Mike was the one that kind of introduced me to the whole concept of, hey, we're talking about transit and we're talking about evacuation and then knowledge and I never really thought of it in quite in that way with regard to why you have why you have a bug out bag why you have a get home bag those are for evacuation purposes why do you have stuff in your vehicle why do you have a go bag those are transit situations and so Mike was the one that introduced me to that and I'd like to bring him here on this channel to talk a little bit more and deep dive into some of the areas that we've talked about in this presentation but again very special thanks to Mike for his contributions in this video I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video featuring my prepping architecture diagram. Please leave your comments below in the comments section regarding this video. I'll also include a link if you want to download a screenshot of the final slide that has all of the various prepping categories from stationary items, your EDC, evacuation, transit, and again, knowledge, the most important one. So again, leave your comments below in the comments section. And moving forward on my channel, I'm probably going to be talking about some of these topics in a little bit more detail. And in future videos, for example, for EDC, for vehicle preps, for evacuation, I'll be referring back to this video with regard to the prepping architecture diagram and where this new video fits into the equation. So again, leave your comments below in the comment section and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video featuring my prepping architecture diagram. See you guys next time.